Um, I'm going to start with a personal note. I have to say that while I was preparing this presentation, I was semi-depressed, not only because of what happened in, in Ukraine, the war and everything. Of course, this showed to everybody that peace is not guaranteed. It's something that we cannot take as granted anymore. And a lot of us were like realized the situation is, is, has changed since what has happened the last years. But not only because of that, but also because I had so much work. Uh, it's so hectic lately at work. So when I started preparing for Edward, I was like, will I make it? Will I have the time to read as much as I should? And I, I really pushed That's myself. That's not good to, for recruiting, man. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. But, you know, um, it comes with a position, I guess. Um, so uh, in hindsight, I'm very happy that I got to... Um, study Redwood because I learned a lot on how they do things and how they, um, I, of course I would use it if I were, but we'll discuss about this in, in, uh, in the end. But I also learned a lot on how they structure things. So follow me through this journey and I hope you also learn something new. All right, so Redwood, let's start. Who am I? Um, I've been for the last 15 years in tech. Um, I've been with Causally. For four years, I'm leading the team that develops the application of Causally. Causally is building a biomedical search engine. So that's what I do. Um, and we have a guest star with us. I'm, I, I'm very happy to have Anthony, uh, who is uh, contributing to Redwood, and therefore he will uh, join me in, in, in 15 minutes, in about 15 minutes. And Angelo, I will need you to add him as a participant when the time comes. Um, yeah, great. What we're gonna do today, uh, we'll discuss, we'll see what Redwood is, uh, we'll see some code examples, then the highlights as I see them and the limitations again as I see them. So what is Redwood? Redwood, it, Redwood is an, an opinionated, full stack serverless ready web application framework, similar to Django or Rails. And it allows you to build and deploy with ease. The people who build Redwood, the founding team are these four. And um, what impress, impresses me the most is that all of them have, have some sort of, um, they're also inter entrepreneurs. Um, this guy, for instance, is a GitHub co-founder. He has developed Gravatar, Jekyll, Semver, Tommel. I put a little poop next to it because I don't really like it. But the other projects that he worked on are, are great, are, are awesome. Um, this one, Peter, is, is a co-founder, right, in, uh, and, and CEO of, of Snaplet. So you, you tend to see people that succeed in what they do as entrepreneurs, and then they, they don't care about tech anymore. But not these guys. And I'm, I'm quite impressed by this team. Redwood is powered by a lot of technologies that you already know. So in, in the front end, you have React. On the back end, the server, you have Fastify. You have Gra GraphQL. To, as an interface between front end and back end. You have Prisma as the ORM for your database. You have Yarn to manage the packages and dependencies. You have Webpack to uh, split the front end code into ba and, and bundle it. You have Storybook to showcase your components. TypeScript, that's optional really, but I do like the fact that you can add it. Zest for testing, Pinot for logging, and Babel, of course, for transpiling the code. So what the team did is that they took all these technologies, a lot of them are very popular, and they put lots of glue around it so that you can use them very easily. You don't need to configure Jest, you don't need to configure Babel, anything. You just, you know, you, you type a few things and you, you're, you're good to go. And whenever there was something missing, there was an open source library or something that uh, would cover for a particular use case, they built it themselves. Um, let's study the architecture of Redwood. Let's first focus on the upper part, which is, um, it's, it has to do with API. First of all, Redwood is very opinionated in how, on how the file structure should look like. It comes with two main folders. The first folder is called slash API. And in there, you put everything that has to do with the server. So you have your database schema, you have your GraphQL interface, services that contain business logic, and any other third-party API. You put this in here, 
and they are compiled into either um, you can sorry they're not compiled there you can deploy into either a serverless environment or you can put it like in a monolith server and deploy it as you would typically do with any web application that's on the front end then on the on on the on the back end sorry then on the front end you got slash web the directory is called web and i kind of like that because they made a, a choice not to call it front end they made a choice to call it web because they think that you might have also other interfaces you might have a cli folder or you might have a mobile application folder um, and i do think this is a great idea to be honest so in here you have your components cells which is something that, that we'll see later forms they have a very good library that helps you with creating forms your styles and all of these go through webpack and from here different chunks and finally they go to the browser now we need to say that the uh, redwood is based on on jumpstack it's based it's they follow the jumpstack principles which actually means that they separate front end from back end and given that they do that they can take advantage of cdns they can put their front end on a cdn and they can also take advantage of serverless technologies so, so they can they can put their backend on serverless and therefore you have an application that can scale almost infinitely right uh, there's nothing stopping you from uh, spawning new functions or spawning um uh, spawning the edge uh, the, the cdn will cover for most of your users and it will give them great latency all right um it looks like rails a lot because it, it follows a convention over configuration uh, pattern and it has a great CLI. But let's see some code. Uh, let me switch to my notes here. All right, um, is it, should I make it a bit, a bit bigger? Does that work guys? Yeah. I, I think it. that's great, yeah. Okay, cool. So the first thing you, you need to do when you start a Redwood application is to call yarn create, and then you specify uh, the template that you want to follow. I want TypeScript, so I add that's, that's TypeScript, and then the name of the directory that I want to, to create. And this will spawn, will scaffold a new uh, project, a new Redwood project. If you're not familiar with yarn create, what it will do, it will first download the create dash Redwood dash app package install it globally and then use it to create the directory over here. So under the hood, if you're not familiar with YARN, it's like NPM. Under the hood, it's like NPM install and then you use it to create the directory. You must have done the same with React, create React app. It's, it's the same philosophy, right? You must have used create React app. And so, this is what I, I, I won't do it now because if I do it now, it takes about say to five minutes. Uh, I've already done it for you and the uh, file structure on the left hand side is what you get. Remember that we said there are two main directories, API, which is, is this one and web. And as we discussed on the API, you will find whatever is related to, to your database. We use Prisma here, so you get your Prisma schema um, and then you get lots of other things that we, will not, we do not need to focus on right now. And on the website, you get your, your components, your pages, whatever is under pages can be actually displayed, um, associated with a root and being uh, displayed in public and layouts and yeah, that's, that's how it works. This one is, is probably the most important file, um, the, routing, the routes file. But let's go, let's, let's uh, uh, do this demo as if we, want, we wanted to create a grid CS page a page where we have a few information about Chris.js and then we also display uh, the meetups that Chris.js Chris uh, is, um, is hosting. So we'll do the following. Uh, we'll, I've, I've already created the directory, but I have done nothing else. Uh, so let me go into Chris.js and I will start the server. I have not touched any code at all. So this is the first thing that you will see when you start Redwood. 
it will take a while. Um, I want to remind you here that this is like Rails. Okay, so it's it's um, it will help you do the work as fast as possible and produce something that is useful. So let's see. Right, so this is the default page that we get. And now it's time to create a few pages. Redwood comes with a great CLI um, and you can call it through Yarn or NPM. Uh, in, in, in our case, uh, RW is a shortcut for Redwood. If I were to type this, this thing, it would be the same as RW and Z is a shortcut for generate. This is exactly the same thing as what I have over here. So I will create a page called home and I will associate it with the root of this, uh, of this project. So I'll do this here actually at the bottom and it will create the page. The page has been added over here. Uh, you can see that uh, Redwood chose a name for me. It used the home um, keyword. It turned it into Pascal case and then added the page prefix in the end. Um, if I open this here, you will see that I can actually make some additions. Chris JS. I don't know, something we can say, welcome to Chris JS. Right. And we can delete this actually, it's not necessary. Let's see, here's your page working. Let's have another page. I will create a page that's called Meetup Archive. This is where we will eventually put our, all our meetups. Okay, the second page has been created. You can find it here. Um, so I can open it, I can open this one. I can say, let's say Meetup Archive. Let's delete this. And let's now link back to the home page. So I would go, I would say go back to home. And from here, notice that you have two very uh, good utilities, very, very useful uh, utilities. Uh, one is the link, and of course this will create an anchor, but the, the other one is the roots uh, utility that will actually expose whatever you have you already have in your roots. So if I type here H, it will automatically autocomplete to home. Doing that, I now have a second page that I will also need to link from the home page to the meetup page. Let me do this here. So link to meetups. I will say here meetups archive. Right, this should be working, but oops, something is wrong. I left this here intentionally because I wanted you to see how the errors are being displayed in uh, in Redwood. It, the platform makes an effort to help you understand what the problem is. And this is really useful here. It says root path does not begin with a slash. I've made a mistake. If I open the roots, there's a slash missing over here. If I add the same, it will work. Refresh. Refresh, no. Because uh, no, meetups, maybe meetup archive should be the name. Let's see. Yep. Okay. So now I have two pages and I can I can switch between them. Great, but I've I haven't done like too many things. Now it's is the time that it gets more interesting. Actually, I will create a database. I won't be using any Postgres or uh, MySQL for now. I'll use SQLite, which is a very simple database that has an, an SQL interface. So I will copy this uh schema over here and then we'll discuss it i will open my database api database prisma schema and then i will paste everything in here and let's go through what we have so we are instru instructing prisma to connect to sqlite and um, this is actually relevant right now it tells prisma how to compile into a prisma client js folder and um, and then this here is the model that we will be creating. It will be converted into a table. 
and we have a meetup. The meetup has an ID that is auto incremented. It's a number. Um, it has a title, body, and created, which will default into now. Pretty simple, I would say. So I've created the schema, and the next thing I will do is I will migrate, meaning that I will tell Prisma to uh, actually do these changes in the database. So Prisma will now create the actual table. Uh, it needs a name for my migration, so I will call it like meetup create or something. Right. So now the, the relevant table is being created in the database. Cool, that's done. And what I can do now, I can use Prisma Studio, which comes bundled with um, uh, Redwood to edit the, um, um, add, actually have, make uh, CAD operations on, on meetups. So I can actually, this is Prisma now, but it comes bundled with Redwood. So I can now add a record. I can say, you know, this, the title of this uh, meetup is uh, kind of special or something. Actually, this is not the title. I would say meetup 43. And then kind of special. Okay, great. Save it. I can also, of course, delete it. I can, I can do other operations, but let's do that for now. It's enough, I think. So I'm, I now have a record. And I could do the same thing, but not using Prisma Studio. Uh, I could do the same thing by scaffolding pages uh, similar to how Rails works um, through Redwood. It, it will achieve a similar, uh, you know, it, the, the objective is the same. We want to be able to manage um, um, meetup records, but I can, if I do this here, I can actually expose it to the world. Uh, it's not going to be a separate server running Prisma Studio. It can be the exact same thing, uh, the same server, the same uh, port, but now it's going to run, it, it's going to have the ability to manage meetups. And I could give this to someone else. I could put it under authentication. or I, I could uh, uh, have a specific use case for it. So when I run this, Redwood generates scaffold meetup. It created all sorts of things, different components, services, pages. And now if I go to uh, meetups and then refresh, this is now Redwood. It's not Prisma anymore. And I see the table of, of the meetups. I can uh, edit a meetup. I can add another meetup. I can do all sorts of operations here. All right, cool. But for the purpose of this demo, I will not be messing with that anymore. I just wanted to show you that Redwood provides that functionality. And for the purpose of this demo, I will go back to the initial page that I created. Uh, so I will go to the home page. And from here, I will go to Meetups Archive. No, I will go back to the roots. And I will actually delete this part because I don't need it anymore. And I will follow through where we had left. In the meantime, Aguilar, if you can add Anthony, because we're very close, that would be great. I'm here. I'm on the channel. OK, great. Um, all right, so uh, back to home with the archive. All right, let me uh, do one more thing. What I want to do here, I want to add a list of, of meetups, right? And I want to expose this to the world. So uh, what I will do here, I will use a cell. And this is like, I think the most impressive, in my opinion, uh, component of, uh, of Redwood. So I will create a new cell called meetup multi, uh, meaning that uh, we will get multiple meetups. When I run this, it will create a component that I will show you now, a module actually, that I will show you now. Um, We'll go to components, meetup multi cell, and it will create. First of all, have a look. It creates tests, stories, mock, everything, right? But I will focus only on this one. So this under the hood is using Apollo client, and it's it's kind of similar on on of on of how Gatsby works. Uh, if you've ever used uh, Gatsby, you have the ability to expose a GraphQL uh, query, 
and then the output of the query is available for you uh, on your component to uh, do whatever you want with it. Um, so that's that's the same thing here. Uh, the same thing is happening. You get your query. The query will bring back um, your uh, uh, multiple meetups. And from here, you can set what will happen during loading, what will happen if the, um, if the data are empty, what will happen if there's a failure, you get the error, and you do something, and what will happen in the case of a success, right? So um, in that particular case, in the case of success, I might want, for instance, to say I have a list, and then I do something with the meetups. Um, I, I'm a bit worried to be honest because now I see this meetup multi has an ID, but it shouldn't. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. Uh, should be meetups to be honest, but okay. Let me try to remove this. So maybe it didn't understand what did I run? As always, the demo will fail. <laughs> um, right. Um, let's let's follow through, and maybe uh, I haven't understood something correctly. So, how do you use this? You go to the Meetup Archive page, and you simply call it as if it was a, a component. You say Meetup Multi Cell. You got it imported at the top too. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and not the stories, but the TSNs. You don't need the whole relative path thing, so you can get rid of all the dots and forward slashes. So you want yeah. web SRC, web forward slash SRC forward slash components, I think. I think I might have messed it a bit, to be honest. Uh, but what I, what I will do, we can return to this presentation, give me a bit of time, and uh, we can return to the demo, and um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll complete this. Um, I'm sorry about that. And with that, um, I'll go back to my presentation, give it to Mr. Anthony Campolo. And Anthony, I will give it to you, share the stage, share anything you want to say and give me uh, two or three minutes to uh, fix the, the issues here. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm good at filling time. That's part of part of my job. So uh, my name is Anthony Campolo. I am on the Redwood JS core team as the main developer advocate for the project. So I have done like a dozen meetup talks very similar to what uh, Dimitri is doing right now. And um, I was originally a bootcamp student, actually, when I was learning Redwood JS. So I was not a professional programmer at all. And I found it to be a very fascinating project because it gave a lot of velocity to both like me as a beginning developer and also to very experienced developers who were familiar with things like Ruby on Rails or other like full stack frameworks, like he mentioned at the beginning of the talk. And so the building a full stack react application in like 2020 2021 2022 is not trivial and is requires a lot of knowledge about both react and then also whatever back end you're using and then how you connect that and depending on what kind of back end you use is going to be slightly different how you connect to it so there's like this huge combinatorial explosion of different ways to to deal with a react app so Redwood team, you know, they they grew up on Ruby on Rails and they really loved it. They wanted to bring that kind of experience to the JavaScript ecosystem. So I was learning it kind of when I first got into uh, this stuff and it was released around like March of 2020. And I've been following it ever since. So I've kind of gotten to see the progression of it over many years. And uh, a couple of things that I like to kind of point out that is a bit different from like the older kind of like marketing material that we used to have around it is that we are de-emphasizing the kind of Jamstack serverless nature of it, even though that is a thing you can do with it. You can run it on serverless functions. You can have a whole decoupled Jamstack set up with your front and your back end separated. If you want to actually, you can just run Redwood 
on a server, or you can run Redwood in a Docker container. So you actually don't need to use serverless Lambda functions if there's like a specific reason that you don't want to, because this can be an issue with say like database connections. Like if you have a whole bunch of Lambdas and you have them connected to your database, you may end up spinning like a thousand Lambdas and that blows up your database. <laughs> and, you know, that's, that's bad. So there are certain situations where the serverless Lambda functions require either extra configuration or just have certain limitations because then you get things like slow like cold start problems and things like that so the the serverless dream is like alive and well and we're all still pushing for it but if today it doesn't quite work the way you want it like you can just run redwood on a server or on a container and we've done a lot to kind of make that possible so that's kind of the one thing i wanted to emphasize and then also in terms of the the back end it's if you're someone who knows a lot about graphql and the graphql ecosystem you're probably familiar with apollo server and apollo server was the back end graphql server that was powering the redwood api for many years but we've actually switched that out to something called graphql helix which is being maintained by the guild which is yuri goldstein's group and it's like the most modern up-to-date graphql server you can get so it's really really cool it's more compatible with things like cloudflare workers and these more like edge native kind of runtimes so yeah the the deployment story is like continuing to expand and get more interesting and there's like so many ways to now deploy and host a redwood application so it's kind of the one thing that i would like to to emphasize but um so far like everything you you've shown shown has been like awesome and is a good kind of uh exemplar of like how redwood works and like what makes it cool and then feel free if anyone has questions to just let me know we'll do that let me conclude the uh, because I have, I, I, I took this seriously. I need to, I need to push through. So I will. Uh, I've now fixed the meetup sets. I probably called something. I, I made a wrong choice when with the naming. So I will now be using the meetup cell over here. Actually, not this one, but this one. Uh, components meetup cell meetup cell. TSX. Um, let's go from scouts. Yeah. Okay. So it's used here. So if I go to over here, you can see that I actually have a list, and you can um, you can go to the cell. And you can say I want to display uh, the key is this thing, but then you can say I want to display only the title. You can get the title from the top. You can say to GraphQL that I need the title. And therefore, if I do that, I'll get it over here. Um, it works as fast as that. Um, it's it's magic. I wanted to uh, follow up with clicking here and getting a single page. I don't need to do that now but you get all sorts of niceties that will allow you to uh, create something very fast. Um, two more things from me, and then I don't know if we, ha if we have some, some time for questions would be great. What I found impressive while studying Redwood. Opinionated file structure, I like this very, very much. Web and API, and the ability to add more interfaces as well. Prisma and database migrations, I think this is great. Prisma is working great so far. It turns out that it's more or less the best ORM that we have in, in JavaScript. Um, GraphQL Helix, um, Anthony uh, spoke about it earlier. Apollo, um, if, you, if you're gonna use Apollo, you can either use it as a separate server or as a middleware in your Express app or your Fastify app. And it's, a, it's like a, a very big thing that you need to put in there and then you cannot really have a lot of uh, flexibility around it. But the GraphQL Helix is something that I was quite impressed with. It's a set of utilities actually that you can pass your GraphQL body to and you get back the past query. It works great. I was quite amazed uh, to find this. Apollo client and cells, you show the cells, how they work. You have one place, one component. You can actually specify your query and the four states that you have during uh, fetching data from the server. 
detailed logging with Pino. Uh, Pino is great, but you don't only get logs on the HTTP level. You also get logs for GraphQL, for database performance. So you get all sorts of layers will print logs and that is already pre-configured for you. Type generation from GraphQL to types works out of the box. Limitations, it connects to a single database engine. You cannot connect at the same time to Postgres and Mongo. Um, if you're gonna do serverless, beware, you need connection pooling for Postgres, for instance. Why is that? Because serverless can scale infinitely and your database cannot. So if you're gonna create a new connection, it, it will come to a point where the database cannot support any more connections and it will break. You don't want this to happen. And therefore you need to be careful and use um, a load balancer for databases though, like PG Bouncer. Number three, it supports a limited set of deploy targets, Netlify, Vercel, serverless, common render. I would say that these are the most important ones. And you can also write your, your own uh, custom logic, but these are supported out, out of the box. So if you want AWS, uh, functions or uh, cloud functions, you should probably set the internet for a, a plugin or something. That's what I have seen so far. So let's give it, uh, give some time for questions if we have in mean, five minutes, if we can afford. And I'm, I'm, I'm very honored again, I'm very honored to have Anthony with us, uh, who's far more experienced in, in whatever uh in, in redwood and and he has worked well, with it. i'm more experienced in row but you are a more experienced developer so <laughs> it's funny how that works out <laughs> right so do we have some questions you can use the q and a function of yeah so uh, we got a question Zoom. about um ssr so this is like one of the very first questions people were asking about redwood when it first came out unfortunately it's still not a thing that we really have a super good answer to today i think this is going to be like one of the very very first things we prioritize once the v1 is released at the end of this month so you have a server with redwood already so if you wanted to implement ssr in like on your actual server like you can do that but there's not really a built-in redwood convention for ssr right now but it is something that we're very cognizant that lots and lots of people want and it's like a, a huge feature request so Hopefully that's something that we'll be able to devote more resources to like having a good native Redwood SSR solution like within the next couple months. Great. Any other questions? You can type on the chat or yeah, we have QA. Let's see to them just a moment. Hmm. Michael, can you help here? Because it doesn't seem ah, I found them. Okay. What kind of application do you have in mind when designing when designing your roadmap? Uh, what kind of applications are, I think the question is, what is Redwood most suitable to, uh, to, 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 to power? What kind of applications? Yeah, I would say it's um, like data intensive dashboard type apps. Like it's for like, definitely for applications, not for websites. And this is a, our, our example is kind of like a blog, which is honestly like not a great example of like what Redwood is actually for. So it's a nice mental model to like learn the framework and, and see what it can do. But for the most part, like it's it's really for for app for database backed applications. And so if you like some of the, the things that people are using it for, there's like Everfund, which is for uh, like generating donation links and doing like managing all the kind of workflows around like payments and things like that. And then we have like team stream, which is based around managing like uh, live streams and things like that. So it's definitely like leaning, like, uh, I don't know if anyone here knows like Swix, Sean Wang, he has a famous saying that Svelte is for site, React is for apps. So Redwood is really leaning into using React for apps and having really interactive type applications. If I may add to that, uh, somebody asked me if I, if I would use Redwood uh, on my day-to-day -day job. Um, and the answer is yes, if I were to start a new company or something, first of all, right now I cannot, I already have a code base that is like four years old. Uh, so I cannot use it right now, but if I were to start a company from scratch, I would definitely use it because it would save so much time and it, it would help me focus on what's actually 
needed to to provide you know to to my users uh, i don't need to worry on how to connect uh, and glue the different technologies between them um, yeah and that's what i'm really leaning into saying that it's for startups like you don't need to use it to build a startup obviously but if you are someone yeah. who is like putting out a product then it's something that you'll definitely want to look at there's a question can i migrate and express create react app to redwood you can absolutely the the biggest difference there is going to be redwood uses graphql so if your whole thing is set up in a kind of restful way it will require kind of rethinking your mental model around that and like how to turn those into graphql requests so it's not like us like a one-to-one -one porting but it's it's absolutely possible to do anything you can do with a react app and express backend you can do that with redwood the problem is that it's going to be a slight shift in terms of you have to figure out the queries but you can scaffold all those out with with redwood so if you know what your models are if you already kind of understand your backend structure redwood will be able to generate those graphql queries for you and kind of do most of that management for you great and we'll take one more question from electra uh does redwood support authentication services like old zero only like nine <laughs> yeah like there's there's so many authentication services you can use with redwood it's kind of ridiculous you can use netlify identity you can use auth zero you can use clerk you can use Superbase. you can use go true is like just a, I'll, I'll drop a link for the the redwood authentication uh documentation okay and uh by the way the cto of clerk is, is part of our community uh, oh, is I don't he? know awesome. if he's here with us, but yeah, I wanted to ask uh, Very cool. how was his experience with uh, with integrating Clerk into Redwood, but yeah, probably another time. All right, uh, I think that we're way over time. Um, Strato, shall we move into the next phase? You're, you're on mute, yeah. For some Where's reason, you, you're muted, yeah. Strato. That, that, that's good for a change. So let's put him on mute. <laughs> <laughs> what? There you go. He's going he's gonna to fix it now. Anthony, thank you very much for, for joining. One two, one and two. What time is it uh, where you live? I, I have no idea. What's your time So. Yeah, I mean, it's noon. It's lunchtime for me. So I'm in, uh, oh, all right. cool. I'm in Missouri. So yeah, and then just last thing, someone asked about internationalization. Um, we don't have a specific internationalization solution right now. You would want to look at just what kind of React internationalization solutions are available. That will be another thing that we'll look more heavily into for post V1. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you very much again. Thank yeah. You. Thank you all for, for doing this. Super happy to be here. This is really fun. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Anthony. That was cool.